treasure hunters are known for taking risks. Especially if they're after something as valuable as a giant diamond. These days, big diamonds are in demand, and not just for jewelry. Some think they hold a key to a new age of electronics. The problem is, the right kinds of diamonds are extremely rare in nature and hard to find. Dr. Tyson, we have an answer. Some scientists have a new recipe for diamonds, made not in the earth, but in the lab. Recently, I got to visit a secret place. I can't tell you where it is. Because, well, I don't really know where it is. I could only get there if I agreed to be blindfolded. It'll be a little while driving, so make yourself comfortable. In fact, the location is so secret, our entire film crew had to be blindfolded. I finally got to peek. Hello. It didn't look all that unusual. Where am I? Oh, sorry. But don't let appearances fool you. We're at the, uh, the U.S. diamond factory. A diamond factory? Excellent. Or maybe a better term would be a diamond farm. All the excitement's inside anyway. Because, as I discovered, what they're doing in the back rooms of this ordinary office building going here first. is actually growing diamonds. The diamonds we grow are 100% real diamond. They are chemically, physically, and optically identical to mine diamonds, with one exception. We grow them. And some of the diamonds they grow here are beautiful. Well, basically, you're making diamonds in machines like this. But Robert Linares didn't start this company simply to make bling. He wants to make diamonds that will revolutionize technology. Diamond is going to have a huge worldwide impact for the next 50 years. It's going to be in our cell phones, it's going to be in our electric cars and in our power grid. It will be everywhere. The company hopes to realize the potential that scientists have seen in Diamond for years. Because it's not just pretty, it's one of the most impressive materials in the universe. Diamond has an amazing toolkit of properties. You can boil it in any acid or any base, and it doesn't destroy diamond. The highest velocity of sound is in diamond. If you could speak to somebody through diamond, the sound would get there much faster than it would through air. And it's not just sound that travels quickly through a diamond. Heat moves faster through a diamond than any other known substance. Jim Butler at the Naval Research Lab demonstrated this to me with a simple experiment. And do you have a credit card? And a block of ice. I only just met you, so how about my AAA card. That's fine with me. <laughs> All right. Press against the block and count the number of seconds so your fingers get cold. And this is going to take a while. This is going to take a while, so it's not going to happen. And did it make any dent in the ice? OK, I, I don't see any. There's nothing. There's okay. nothing there. So how about a piece of copper? OK. So hold it by the edge. This would be like okay. a penny, holding a penny. Yeah, holding a penny, but this okay. is just a nice, pure piece of copper. About a half inch from the edge, OK. OK. Now count the number of seconds. Oh, right there. Okay, how many seconds that was that? was three seconds. Three to four seconds, yes, okay. okay. And what did you do with the, the ice cube? I, I cut the ice. This small piece of copper sliced right through the ice because, unlike the plastic card, copper is an excellent conductor of heat. So it drew the heat right out of my fingertips, melting the ice and leaving my fingers cold. Impressive, huh? But then, Jim offered me a big chunk of diamond. Hold it just by the tip. Now touch the ice and count the seconds. Instant. It's cutting into the ice like a knife through butter. Yes. Turns out, diamond conducts heat five times faster than copper. All this is possible because of diamond's unusual crystal structure. Pure diamond is made of all carbon atoms, but the carbon atoms have to be arranged in a unique way to give it the amazing properties of diamond. If you arrange the carbon atoms in another way, you get this, graphite one of the softest materials around. Well, obviously, these are two very different materials. Graphite is black, it's opaque, and we rub it against paper, it comes apart, whereas diamond is transparent, it's hard, um, one of the hardest substances known to mankind. 
Diamond has the highest atomic density of any material. So there's more atoms per cubic centimeter than any other material. But diamond isn't just hard. It has impressive electrical properties as well. A centimeter thick plate of diamond can withstand 10 million volts of electricity. Electrical engineers would love to exploit these unique properties. But they've been frustrated by the ones that come out of the ground because they're all slightly different. The reason we cannot use diamonds out of the ground for a lot of technological applications is because no two are alike. They're like snowflakes. Have you ever seen two snowflakes that are alike? Well, we've got billions of diamonds that we mine out of the ground, but trying to find two that have exactly the same properties is actually very difficult. It all comes down to how natural diamonds form. Most natural diamonds formed billions of years ago, deep beneath Earth's crust, under extreme pressures and temperatures. Volcanic activity transported them to the surface, where we find them today. So the Earth is not a really well-controlled crystal growth furnace. So what happens is you're left with whatever the Earth gives you, you have to then scratch your head and say, what can I do with it? Decades ago, engineers figured out how to make diamonds in giant hot vices. But the process is impractical for making large stones. And it's difficult to produce a crystal that's pure carbon without defects. But what if you could manufacture diamonds and guarantee purity and consistency? Neil, you have to put your, um, the folks at Apollo Diamond say they can do it. They're one of just a few companies making diamonds using technology known as chemical vapor deposition, or CVD. So to grow a diamond, you have to start with a piece of diamond. So you start with a very thin plate of diamond. It's as thick as a human hair. Here's how it works. They start with thin slices of pure diamond called seeds. The seeds are then placed inside a vacuum chamber. A cocktail of gases is pumped in. Apollo's exact recipe is top secret, but it of course includes gases that contain carbon, such as methane, which are heated to extreme temperatures, so they become what's called a plasma. So what temperature is that plasma? That plasma, if you could measure the temperatures, probably three or 4,000 degrees Celsius. It's about the same temperature of the gas that you'd find at the edge of the sun. The extreme heat breaks apart the gas molecules. And then, through a complex chain of reactions, carbon atoms take their place on the crystal below, following the pattern established by the diamond seed. Over the course of a week or more, diamonds grow bigger and bigger. When they emerge from the grower, they don't look much like diamonds. Until they're cut and polished. And then. The diamonds baked up here look great to me, but what would an expert think? 